In this video, you'll learn everything about the food pyramid. Without further ado, let's get started. So what exactly is the food pyramid? Well, it's a simple visual guide to the types and proportions of food that we should eat every day for good health. Food that contains the same type of nutrients are grouped together on each of the shelves of the food pyramid. This gives you a choice of different foods from which to choose a healthy diet. Using a food pyramid is a tool to follow different dietary guidelines and is a good start in the right direction. It will help you to get the right balance of nutritious food within your calorie range. Now we'll further elaborate on the different layers of the food pyramid. There are three layers of the food pyramid, which include 1. The foundation layer, 2. The middle layer, and 3. The top layer. Now let's have a look at the foundation layer. The foundation layer includes the three plant-based food groups, which are fruits, grains, vegetables, and legumes. This layer makes up the largest portion of the pyramid, at around 70% of what we should eat. Plant food should make up the largest portion of our diet. Plant food contains a wide variety of nutrients, like vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. They're also the main source of carbohydrates and fiber in our diet. A significant convergence of evidence suggests that plant-based diets can help prevent and even reverse some of the top killer diseases in the Western world, and can be more effective than medication and surgery. Older children, teens, and adults should aim to have at least two servings of fruit and five servings of vegetables or legumes each day. From the grains food group, we should choose mostly whole grains, like quinoa, oats, and brown rice and wholemeal, whole grain, high cereal fiber varieties of bread, crisp breads, pasta, and cereal foods, or over highly processed, refined varieties. Now we move on to the middle layer. This layer includes yogurt, cheese, milk, and alternatives, and the lean meat, fish, eggs, and legumes food groups. Food in the milk, yogurt, cheese, and alternatives group primarily provides us with calcium and protein, plus other vitamins and minerals. This food group also refers to non-dairy options like soy, rice, or cereal milks, which have at least 100 milligrams per 100 milliliters of added calcium. Choose reduced fat options of these foods to limit excess kilojoules from saturated fat. Food in the lean meat, poultry, fish, eggs, nuts, seeds, and legumes section are our main sources of protein. This food group is rich in protein and is also a good source of other nutrients, like iodine, iron, zinc, and vitamins, especially some B-group vitamins. The animal food in this group also contains vitamin B12, and some of them contain omega-3 fatty acids. Now we'll look at the top layer. This layer refers to healthy fats that we need small amounts of every day to support heart health and brain function. The top level of the food pyramid consists of your non-essential foods, like fats, oil, and sweet. This is the only level of the pyramid that should be restricted. There are no serving guidelines for this level, and you should generally try to avoid foods that are high in fat or sugar. You should choose food that contains healthy fats instead of food that contains saturated fats and trans fat. Choose unrefined, polyunsaturated, and monounsaturated fats from plant sources, like extra virgin olive oil, nuts, and seed oils. Limit the amount of saturated fat that you consume, and avoid trans fat. We also get healthy fats from food in other food groups, such as seeds, avocados, fish, and nuts. We need these healthy fats to support our health and brain function. Healthy Eating Guidelines the shape of the food pyramid immediately suggests that some foods are good and some should be eaten more often, but also that others aren't so good and should only be eaten occasionally. The layers represent major food groups that contribute to the total diet. But how do you link them together? 1. Choose water. 2. Increase herbs and spices. 3. Limit your salt and added sugar. 4. Limit sodium and five, limit added sugar. Water. Water is one of the most essential elements to health. A mere 2% drop in our body's water supply can trigger signs of dehydration. A healthy sedentary adult living in a temperate climate should drink at least one and a half liters of water per day. 
This level of water intake balances water loss and helps in keeping the body properly hydrated. The water you consume through food and drinks follows a very precise route to arrive in your cells, of which it is a vital constituent. Therefore, choose water as your main drink and avoid sugary options like soft drinks, sports drinks, and energy drinks. Increase Herbs and Spices The use of herbs and spices has been incredibly important throughout history. Many were celebrated for their medicinal properties well before culinary use. If you're looking to round out your healthy lifestyle, you'll want to stock up on the following herbs and spices and use them generously in your cooking, or use them on their own to enhance the absorption and benefits received. Some of the best examples are arrowroot, cinnamon, turmeric, basil, mint, cayenne, dill weed and seed, and curry powder. Limit salt and added sugar. The food pyramid reminds us to limit our intake of salt and added sugar. This means avoiding adding salt or sugar to food when we're cooking or eating, and avoiding packaged foods and drinks that have salt or added sugar in the ingredients. Some suggestions that can help you reduce your salt and sugar dependency include eating more home-cooked meals, choosing frozen over canned, or delaying and salting. Even reducing these by small amounts can make us healthier. And last but not least, there are five stages of change that have been conceptualized for a variety of problem behaviors. Each of these stages describes an individual's attitude toward behavior change. Trying to change behavior before one is ready usually results in failure to develop new healthy behaviors. Small steps are the best bet for long-term results. These five stages include pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, action, and maintenance. Pre-contemplation. The stage at which there is no intention to change behavior in the immediate or foreseeable future. Many individuals in this state are unaware or underaware of their problems. They may not be ready for change. A good strategy? Assess knowledge, attitudes, and beliefs, and provide information to build on the existing knowledge. Contemplation. The stage in which people are aware that a problem exists and are seriously thinking about overcoming it, but have not yet made a commitment to change or take any action. Making the leap from thinking about change to taking action can be hard. Asking yourself about the pros or the benefits and the cons or the things that get in the way of changing your habits may be helpful. A good strategy is to discuss your motivation and barriers to change and your possible solutions. Preparation If you're in the preparation stage, you are about to take action. To get started, look at your list of pros and cons. How can you make a plan and move to action? Here's a good strategy. Assist in developing an action plan for change. Provide direction and encouragement. Action the stage in which individuals modify their behavior, experiences, or their environment in order to overcome their problems. Action involves the most overt behavioral changes and requires a considerable commitment of time and energy. A good strategy? Reinforce decisions for change. Offer continued support and reinforcement for positive changes. Maintenance now that healthy eating and physical activity has become part of your routine, you need to keep things interesting, avoid slip-ups, and find ways to cope with what life throws at you. A good strategy? Add variety and stay motivated. Mix up your routine with new activities, physical activity buddies, recipes, rewards, and food.